Hi everyone, Phil Rowley here and welcome to my tying bench. Today we're going to tie the Foam Creeper, a very buoyant, almost dry fly light looking dragonfly nymph pattern. This is a fly that will allow you to dredge right along the bottom in some of the ugliest structure, weeds and rocks with minimal hang ups. So join me at the bench and I'll show you how to tie this deadly fly. And if you like what you've seen, be sure to subscribe to my channel, of course like this video, Hit the bell to get notifications of future videos and check out the comment section for the pattern recipe and all the tools and materials I use to tie this fly. So join me, let's get going. The challenge with many dragonfly nymph patterns is they can be complicated and time consuming to tie. I'm certainly guilty of developing complex dragonfly nymph patterns too. The foam creeper however isn't one of them. Here are the short list of materials you will need to tie your own foam creeper. So let's tie you a foam creeper. It's uh, a simple dragonfly nymph pattern. And uh, you're probably wondering, dragonfly nymph, big long bug, why do I have a scud hook in? All will be explained. Into the jaws of the vise, I've got a Daiichi 1120 uh, size 6 curved scud hook. You can use a time on an 8 as well. And we're just going to start the tying thread, which is UTC 140. It's a heavy thread because we're going to be securing some foam and things down so we want to make sure we have a good purchase on it and we're just going to cover that front portion of the hook where we're going to form a um, foam hammerhead a technique first shown to me by a friend of mine in British Columbia Les Robinson that he uses his dragonfly and it makes a functional buoyant uh, head of the fly that looks quite realistic so I've taken a section of olive sheet foam you could use tan this is olive, just graph foam cut into a, a strip that's about the same, just slightly less than the width of the gape of the hook. And then I'm going to trim the end of it like a picket on a picket fence. And excuse my band-aided finger. Lost an argument with a boat anchor. So we're just going to tie this in place. Move the tying thread back up, lay the point of that picket onto the hook and secure it. The point makes it easier to tie in and just wind back with your tying thread, kind of open wraps and bind that foam down. Okay, and then what you're going to do, to do is take that foam and fold it over and push it against the hook eye so you create a little indentation where the hook eye is and now you're going to come in with your dubbing needle and stab it right where that hook eye indentation is right in the middle go through the front side and then come through on the back side make sure you've gone right through bored a hole for it thread is hanging there now we're just going to take that and carefully work that hook eye right through. I'm going to bring my tying thread up so it's just out of the way and make one complete wrap of thread around and on the second turn now I start to tighten and tighten and tighten and tighten. Go tighter, tighter, tightest. And you can see I've made a nice somewhat centered foam head. Now we're just going to come in, use my carefully, use the backs of the scissor blades to push away the thread and make one more trim and then really bind, tag into that foam down. Okay, and now we're going to give it a little makeover. We've got kind of a light green underbody so we don't really have to do much there but I'm going to darken the top half of the head using a uh, permanent marker, a dark olive green. These are the uh, Prismacolor markers. 
and I'm going to use the fine and I'm just going to do the middle portion of the head here. But you've created a dark olive head like so and then we're going to beat it up a bit by giving it some black eyes to suggest the prominent eyes of dragonfly nymph. So we're just going to round those up and then come in One could argue this is ostensibly more for the, the fly tire's sake than the fish. Just color that in like so. And just finish the eyes off. This is like trimming deer hair. You can go forever. Round them onto the underside. Not that the fish really see the underside. And I got a little bit of clear spot left, I noticed, here. So I'm just going to touch that up. But you can see you got a nice, realistic looking dragonfly head. And what you want to do now is coat this, after you let it sit for a few seconds and, and dry, we're going to put some of the Solera's flex formula on here to protect our artwork. So I'm just going to, because this will adhere to the foam, so I'm just going to spread that around like so with a dubbing needle, just a, just a light coat on it, just to add a little bit of durability to it. And this Solaris is the only UV resin I found so far that sticks to the foam. We're just going to smear that around, make sure we've coated just the painted area. You don't necessarily have to do the underside because we didn't put any coating on there, any marker. Just place that around and let that sit for a few seconds. Make sure it distributes well. And we're going to come in with our curing light and just rotate that head around. And that's going to protect the finish on our head. And we're using the alternating pulse because that actually helps cure the UV resin faster. Because in the curing process there can be some heat buildup that doesn't you know, cause anything bad, but you just don't get a nice, neat, better cure, we'll say. I guess, and I can see a little bit on the front. I can probably add some more, but uh, we're good right there. Got most of that protected. So, let's carry on with the rest of the fly. This fly floats like a cork. So we're going to use fast sinking line to drag this down. And the body that uh, we're going to use for this is... Um, these Montana Fly Company makes these. These are for furry foam bodies in sizes 6 and 8. Uh, tan olive, this is what they look like. And quite buoyant, but we have to first of all mark these up. So I'm just going to use a pair of tweezers to hold them so I don't get this all over my fingers. And again we'll, we'll uh, give it a light green underbody. So this is a leaf green, and you always go from light, when you color in these bodies, from light color to dark. So I'm just going to give this a light underbody, like so. And then we'll darken the sides, so we'll use a dark olive. We're going to cut this to length, so you don't have to do the whole thing. Again on the other side. Now these are the kind of thing they use for big foam hoppers and stones and just big foam attractor dries. But I saw these when I looked from above with that furry foam. I went, boy, that's just like a dragonfly nymph body. So we'll let that sit and dry for a second. We're going to do some additional touch-ups to it, but it's easier to do this in, in, when it's in this state rather than when it's tied on. And what we're going to do actually 
is we're going to tie this in with an extended body out over the hook. And that's why we use the short shanked hook because I used to, when I first started playing with this, we used to tie them on a long shanked hook and I used to get some just hellacious hits. And then the fly would all of a sudden let loose, right? I didn't have the fish and I couldn't figure it out. And it was only after having discussions with um, actually Kelly Gallup, who was having the same issues with his big streamers going for the big long shanks, and realizes that a lot of times fish will take their prey in a head shot. So when you're using that long shank, the, the fish has come in at the head and has got the fly in head first. And when you go to actually set the hook, you actually end up pulling the fly out of the fish's mouth. So this, this fly works on the premise that the fish take this dragonfly nymph head on in almost a kill shot and uh, with the hook being there like on a big short shank streamer hook he's going to get the business end of this fly right away and the hookups are going to improve and that's certainly been the case so what I've done is I've taken the the furry foam and, and again cut it to length experimented with it we're going to be probably the finished body we want stop from getting my fingers in the way here we want our body to stick out maybe you know proportional somewhat they're not too long but like that so I'm going to come back a little bit on it and just with my scissors like so just cut it to a to a point like on a picket fence just simply to ease the tie in okay that looks about good I'm just going to hold that point up I'm actually going to move this back and again tight tighter tightest. So really bind it in by the point to get that in and then I'm going to come over the top and just do a securing wrap and then get progressively tighter as I go forward and I'm building a little thorax area and the reason I don't go super tight is I don't want this to spring up like this. Not that it's probably the worst thing in the world but obviously I want to make sure this is well and truly tied in place. Okay, so we're good to go there. Now we can come in and we can finish the touch up with the a few spots there that are still clear. Model this up. There we go. Now we just got to do a little bit of dubbing and some legs. So the first thing we do with legs is this is uh, another MFC product as well. Olive barred barred sexy floss in olive size medium and we're going to take two of these legs a pair and I'll do the front side ones first so I've got the thread right up behind the hook eye kind of put it on an angle so you can see a little bit better I'm going to lay the pair of legs right at the midpoint on the bobbin so the approximate midpoint, I'm going to fold them around the thread and secure them in place a couple of wraps right behind like so. And then I'm going to take the two legs behind the tie-in point and one of the legs forward of the tie-in point and just walk the thread back in firm but not super tight wraps to tuck them in in a controlled fashion right along the side of the shank so they stick out like this and this guy is an unfortunate casualty he's gone because they've got six legs and now we're just going to repeat this process for the far side so the idea of these legs when you retrieve this fly in short little strips um, just above the weed tops those legs are going to pulse and vibrate and tuck along the side just like the natural nymphs do but can sweep forward to suggest a walking nymph as well so again we come around we've doubled them on over a couple of wraps get them positioned properly a couple of wraps in between grab the two these are the two legs back of the thread and this one seems to be falling into shape so we're just going to grab it and walk the thread back and hold those down the side so we get them to tuck and flow like so and then we're going to just come up pull on this one to reduce bulk 
at this point you can come in. I just sort of try to grab all three legs. I got one that's just not wanting to be grabbed. And I'm just going to hold them and come in and trim them approximately even. I'm not trimming them with any tension on them. I'm just gathering them. And about even with the end of the body is fine. See they're not under much tension at all. And just trim them. And you get a set of legs like so. So now we just got to fill in the gap. And to do that we're going to form a small little dubbing loop. So I'm going to put my finger down. I got a, about a three inch loop here max. Come up. Come around and this hasn't tightened up so now I'm going to just pass my bobbin over and around a couple of times like so and that will because the the foam body when I tied it in has made that diameter of the hook so big it can't close up tight so by passing it around that'll close it up and just let that sit like so got the dubbing loop form we're just going to add some Arizona synthetic peacock into the loop it's a little it's a great dubbing material as far as but it can be a little tough to work with. You could also touch dub here if you wanted to. You put the just insert little clumps of the synthetic peacock. I'm just gonna make a scruffy little body. I'm not I think original versions I used to put a wing case on it, but found it kinda redundant. If you look at a dragonfly nymph close up, you definitely can see wing cases, but a lot of times they are the same color as the thorax itself so I'm just going to go that the fish sees this just the overall profile of this and the color and responds. I think if the fish starts identifying anatomical features I might have bigger problems. I'm probably not going to get that fish. So I'm just spinning that tight to get control of the semi seal. Sorry not the semi seal, the synthetic peacock. My tying thread is right up behind the head and we're just going to make a scruffy looking thorax on this fly. We're not going for pretty. This is a big gnarly bug and that's what we want it to look like. Just come up, tie that off. Trim. And then I'm actually going to spin this, the bobbin, in a, in a uh, clockwise fashion. And that's going to cord up the thread. And I can even add a little coloration to this just to darken it up so it better blends in. Like so. I'm going to put a little bit of super glue onto that thread. Take a couple more wraps. Take the fat end, a little more marker right in here. And all that's left to do to finish our foam creeper is three to four turn whip finish. And you are done. So this fly is extremely buoyant. This is not a dry fly. This is a um, fly that you're going to attach on a short three to four foot leader with a fast sinking type seven line and drag this thing down to the depths and on that short leader just skip it and dart it over the weed tops. I usually fish this at a brisk pace because with um, fish buoyant flies slowly there's a risk the fish will take that fly deeply uh, because there's no tension on the leader when you pause it that fly rises up fish puts his mouth around the fly and there's no resistance to it, doesn't spit it out and of course swallows it. So all we're going to do now is we can add a little bit more modeling if you want. Just take our marker so we got some of our just dabbing it with the, the dark olive. If you want to put a little brown on it you can do the same as well. Just Again we're just adding Again, this is probably more for our benefit than it is for the trouts. But if we feel better about our flies, I think we fish them better. So there you have it. The finished foam creeper. Easy to tie. Floats like a cork, so drag it down with a sinking line. Three to four inch strips with pauses. And hang on, because they clock this thing when they hit it. And you can see from above, it looks like 
perfect little profile silhouette of a Darner Dragonfly Nymph. So put those in the Dragonfly Nymph section of your fly box and good luck. For more information on fly fishing, and stillwater fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online stillwater fly fishing store. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. While you're visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.